Every now and then we'll hear or we'll read about somebody, someone that we might call, you know, someone that we like very much, or someone that we might fall into the category of a favorite person. And what we hear about this person is that somehow this person has been behaving badly. You know, maybe it was a co-worker who may have been seriously abusing the corporate expense account and was found out and let go. Or maybe it's a friend who's spending all sorts of alone time with someone who is not their spouse. Or maybe it's a family member whose secret addictions are now having very public repercussions on their spouse and their family. Or maybe it's a sports figure or a movie star, someone who's gotten into trouble with the law for whatever reason. And how do we feel? We feel kind of disappointed. And it maybe even makes us wonder and we think to ourselves, you know, I'm so surprised at that. I really thought they were one of the good ones, right? Well, when we say a statement like that, what we're implying, we have the assumption that if they're one of the good ones, then people can be divided into two distinct categories. You've got the good people, and then you have the bad people. And each one of us then would clearly be one or the other. We would either be moral or immoral, loving or cruel, generous or stingy, honest or dishonest, loyal or backstabbing, compassionate or judgmental, innocent or guilty, pleasing to God or in the doghouse with God, and you know, you get the picture. And since we, we do that, and since there are only two options to choose from, most of us have absolutely no trouble doing what you might expect. Make sure that we end up being on the good side, or that we'll be in the good category, unless of course we've done something outrageously immoral or criminal. And when we do the exact same things with other areas of our life too, you know, nearly all of us will presume that, well, I'm the good driver, it's the other person on the road that's the problem, you know, I'm open-minded, you know, I will take all of these things into account, you know, and of course I've got the better taste in music, I can't stand that stuff they're playing now, but I've got good taste in music, right? So, so often we find a way of keeping ourselves so firmly planted in that good category that we do some, what you might want to call maybe like some moral gymnastics. Somehow, you know, well, I'm not being completely honest, but I'm not as bad as what that other person did, or, you know, oh, it's not a real lie, it's just a, just a white lie. I'm just stretching the truth just a little bit. You know, or if someone complains that you never give anything, well, it's not because I'm stingy or anything, I'm just reasonably planning for my future, you know? Or even, you know, even you hear people that, you know, are unfaithful in their relationships or whatever, and you say, you know, it's, you got to understand, it's not my fault. I was driven to it by all these difficulties in the marriage or whatever. And so we almost never see ourselves as the problem. You know, we clearly aren't what is wrong in this world. Not a chance. We aren't what really needs to change, right? We're one of the good guys, right? And that's obvious. And we should never let ourselves forget that, right? Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity. You know, then that will put us into a very select group, one which gets a lot of attention from Jesus 
throughout scripture. And aren't we lucky about that? Unfortunately, it's the only group that Jesus seems to have a serious problem with. Tax collectors, prostitutes, lepers, foreigners, Jesus easily accepts all of them, is kind to them, compassionately reaches out to them, and despite society's stern disapproval. But people who are convinced of their own goodness, convinced of their own righteousness, convinced of their own superiority, moral or otherwise, those are the ones it seems that Jesus has a serious problem with, with people who think that way. You know, they are about the only people in Scripture to whom Jesus really gives a piece of his mind to. And that should tell us something. The Pharisee in today's Gospel passage from Luke had it completely wrong. It was the one who had it right, was the tax collector, sometimes called the publican. He was the one who was standing off to the side, beating his breast, afraid to even raise his eyes to heaven. And the only thing that he had on his mind was, Lord, be merciful, because I'm a sinner. To be a sinner, that implies sin. And the word sin hasn't become, has that sort of become like a, a dirty word for many of us. Many people felt that for a long time there was too much focus on sin and not enough focus on the joy that it comes from living a God-centered life. And that very well may be true. And you can decide that for yourself. And yet, admitting that we are sinners does not mean that we're here to beat ourselves up over it, or that we consider ourselves worthless, or that we fear God's wrath every second of the day. It simply means that we are not perfect, and that when we sin, each of us contributes to the world being a little less than it can be because of the choices we make. And sin contributes to making ourselves less than we can be as well. And admitting that we are sinners means that we accept and admit that we need change, and that we are called to get more to love more, to accept more, and to admit and to be more. And most importantly, that we sincerely desire to let God change us. So to put it simply, it means we know that deep in our hearts we need to be saved. And we know in whom we will find that salvation, that reconciliation, that peace, and that joy, the best of everything that God so desperately wants to give us and to the world. So I guess it's safe to say now that there really aren't just simply people who are good people and bad people. There are just sinners and there are sinners. And there are people who sometimes do the wrong thing and people who sometimes do the wrong thing. And there are people who mess up, and there are people who mess up. And there are people who need God for everything, and then there are people who need God for everything. And when we put it that way, we know where creating a better world begins. It begins with you, and it begins with me.